Is Amazon trying to be your doctor? Hey friends, actual doctor Abdul Al Sayed here. Amazon just made one of the biggest purchases in healthcare. They purchased the online primary health provider One Medical for, get this, $3.9 billion in cash. So you got to know the founders of One Medical, they're taking the payday all the way to the bank. But there's something that any of us who care about healthcare, which means all of us, because, well, all of us have bodies, should be thinking about right now. Amazon, they've grown the way they have by being extremely disciplined about two strategies. They either want to grow vertically or grow horizontally. What do I mean by that? Vertical growth means trying to own all of the pieces of your supply chain. So you may be a online retailer of books, which by the way is how Amazon started. But then you start to say, well, how can we start to own the distribution channels, not just rely on a FedEx or a UPS or a USPS, God forbid, to deliver our books. Instead, we will start delivering them on our own. That way we control that part of the supply chain, getting books to folks. The other part of it is how do we control more of the business above us? So obviously Amazon had to buy books from publishing houses, but they started to write these contracts that allowed them to have pretty substantial control over what those publishing houses did. They get better contracts than some of the other booksellers. That's how you grow vertically. But growing horizontally is doing exactly what you did across different sectors. So remember, Amazon starts out as a bookseller, and now Amazon sells almost everything. And that includes primary health care. So here are the three things you need to know about Amazon's foray into primary care. The first is that Amazon is already a healthcare company. That's right. They may not be providing health care per se up until now, but they were a pharmacy. There is an Amazon online pharmacy. You can have your doctor write your script to that pharmacy. It'll get delivered to your house, just like everything else that you can get on Prime. So Amazon has been a healthcare company. Now, this should send big alarm bells ringing in your head. Bing, 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 bing. Amazon's first anchor into healthcare was their pharmacy. Now they're starting to grow vertically into that market. How are they doing that? Well, where do most prescription drugs originate? <laughs> in the pad of a doctor, in this case, an online prescription pad. So by purchasing one medical, what they're doing is growing onto their pharmacy business. But here's number two. Amazon's just become one of the biggest players in an already consolidating market. Amazon isn't doing anything different than most of the other healthcare companies that are buying each other up. I want you to think about this. Think about your hometown, wherever it is that you grew up. You can probably name most of the hospitals in and around there. Have you noticed that over the past 10 years that those hospital names have been bought up? So instead of having this hospital or that hospital, you've now got these hospital systems. And there's usually two or three of them that are jockeying for patients. Now, that's happened across the country. Take a look at this graph from the Kaiser Family Foundation. What you're seeing here, basically, is a graph showing you healthcare consolidation in a nutshell. That's the reason why you've seen a smaller number of names on hospitals, despite the fact that most of those hospitals still exist. Unless, of course, you live in a rural community, in which case a lot of these companies will buy your local hospital and then shut it down because they realize that they just can't make as much money off of it. Not only aren't there that many people, but people in these communities tend to be poor. So their healthcare reimbursements come via Medicaid, which reimburses on average at about half the rate as private health insurance. But this healthcare consolidation, it's happening mainly in hospitals and to some degree in the outpatient space. Now, I just used a lot of jargon. Let me explain what I mean by that. Hospitals provide inpatient care. You are in the hospital. You stay there overnight. Outpatient care is the kind of care that most folks get in a clinic. You go to some website, you schedule an appointment, and then you go see your doctor outpatient. You're not in the hospital. Outpatient consolidation is what Amazon is trying to do right now. But here's number three. This isn't going to be Amazon's last move. Let's be clear. I told you at the front end, Amazon was interested in vertical and horizontal consolidation. They've moved horizontally by purchasing pharmacies. Now they're trying to grow that sector vertically. The question is, what other parts of healthcare can fit into Amazon's main business? Amazon's main business is using the internet to provide you things that you would have had to do at a brick and mortar shop. Like, you know, buy a book at Barnes & Noble. Now you're buying it from Amazon. Go to Walmart to buy your basic cookware. Now you're doing it at Amazon. So the question is, what else can Amazon do? it's probably not going to start buying hospitals because by definition, you have to be in the hospitals to get inpatient care. So that's probably not where they're going. But what are the other parts of healthcare that they can do outpatient? I really wouldn't be surprised if, well, they created Amazon health insurance because that's an important part of healthcare that doesn't really add any value and frankly can be done from anywhere. So now they own a pharmacy, they own a primary care provider, and the next step is Amazon health insurance. As they say, folks, watch this space.
Stepping back, though, all of this should remind us that we probably don't want a mega corporation that makes billions of dollars and pays bare minimums in taxes running our health care. All of this should remind us that our insurance system is run by mega corporations that make billions of dollars in profit. Amazon is probably going to be the next one. And that's a real problem because in our current system, upwards of 10% of Americans don't have health insurance at all. Why? Well, because insuring them is not profitable. What we really need is Medicare for all. Hey friend, thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos like this and have more of your questions answered, click the subscribe button on this screen. And if you want to support me and want more content, I hope that you'll subscribe to The Incision, my newsletter. There, I reflect a bit further, go a bit deeper on some of these issues, and I interview some of the leading thinkers of this moment. The link to subscribe is on the screen here. See you soon.